do that. Um, I'm going to read a short story. Do I look like a rock star? Yeah. Um, I'm going to read a short story called Magpie. Um, there, no magpies were harmed in the making of this story, Susie. Um, but basically, it was inspired by a condition which my friend Jess told me about called Pika, which um, is a compulsion to eat things that are not actually food. So tables, um, screws, random things. I recommend that everyone looks at the Wikipedia site. That's source of knowledge. In it. <laughs> My boss wants to talk to me. It's written on an envelope that he left me under the desk. See me. Never good. Probably thinks I've been stealing from the tell. If only it were that simple. Looks like I'm going to have to move on yet again, which is too bad because I quite liked working in this quirky little wine shop. I bet he's used to people making wine or fags. Bet he thinks I'm a real dick for having the cheek to steal money out the till. I'm going to leave before he can talk to me. That we have resigned. I've been doing so well. See, by the time I was 13, I'd swallowed more notes than I could count. It didn't matter the denomination. In those days, they mostly tasted the same to me. Salty, sweet and creamy with a metallic aftertaste. <laughs> Although the odd one that I whipped from my granny's sock drawer when I thought she wasn't looking tasted a bit like dirt and old socks. Maybe because she was a smoker. The notes I've nipped from my mum's navy purse would have a faint tinge of perfume depending on how long they've been living in there for. She caught me once, taking the money that is. I thought I'd be in trouble, but she just looked straight through me as a mother will. She probably felt bad for dad leaving. I worked in a call centre once, that was a pretty sweet job because I got to tell people what to do and of course there was very little opportunity for gobbling up cash. On my way home I used to do, oh, sorry, on my way to work I used to do with the meagre contents on my wallet. Greedily I'd push one note into my mouth, closing my eyes, savouring the creamy texture on my tongue. As the sodden paper travelled down my throat I enjoyed the saline tang it left as I choked it down. I always wanted another. Another crumpled fibre onto my palate, and then another, and another, until all the money in my wallet was gone. All my funds were never enough. <laughs> Although there was no cash in the call centre, there were still wallets. Those wallets peered up at me from bags left carelessly open around every corner, till I crumbled. The work was just so unsatisfying, and one day I ended up in a disabled toilet with some random person's bag, disappointed that they only had a tenner in their cheap, shiny-looking purse with a bowl. <laughs> Call centres don't pay very well. <laughs> that random person was Jennifer Smith. There were store bank cards in the city. Don't know who she was, but I devoured her last £10 note in seconds. I left shortly after that. Stealing from a faceless company is one thing, but taking money from those who are just as skint as me is no fun. It's sick, I know that. I know I'm a sick man, but I can't help myself. Extracting the remains of my wages from the envelope, another brown Sir Walter Scott looks up at me forlornly. I barely remind myself that I rent to pay before I stuff it into my mouth. The taste is overwhelming, gorgeous, and I brace myself on the cash desk, closing my eyes in a blur of ecstasy. Down they go, an aftertaste of red wine, a feeling in my belly of total satisfaction. Nothing beats it, nothing. When I open my eyes, there is a customer standing on the other side of the desk, a bottle of cheap rosé in his hands and a startled expression on, on his young face. He just stares at me open mouth, glancing down at the empty envelope from the desk between us. You're well getting ID, pal, I tell him. 